the police says that Melissa Silvera was shot dead while she was asleep in her bed in her matrimonial home boy listen welcome back to SoFlo TV again everybody it is your host with the most it's 2024 they call it the year of reveal and they said that every darkness shall come to light or every every lie shall be exposed I don't know if you tune in this morning when we went live to speak about Beachy Stout trial and the <sighs> He's caught. He's caught on tape planning his wife's murder. That's not what we come to talk about today though. Today we come to talk about this Jolian Silvera guy and Melissa Silvera, the former MP who was charged for his wife's murder. And Peter Champagny is his attorney. And why things just keep on revealing and revealing and revealing. So another bombshell drop today in the case. And you know, at first I thought he was going to get away with it, but it don't look like he's going to get away with it. They're going to have to pull a miracle off to get him off of this. So, the latest information update says that the family of the former member of parliament, Jolian Silvera, and the media were banned from entering the courtroom on Thursday. Thursday is today, right? as the former legislator made his first appearance before the judge to answer the charges that he had murdered his wife, Melissa. His daughter and her mother were visibly disappointed when Justice Vinnett Graham Allen made the announcement minutes after 2 p.m. So they were not permitted to go inside of the courthouse. Once the judge said one has to exercise discretion in each case, the Graham Allen said that the family and the media will be allowed inside of the courtroom at a later date, just not today. I want to tell you, I see my jump off at the back of the truck. It kind of reminds me when they were doing the Klansman one Dan gang trial and the guys were coming to court with like their heads covered up. Yeah, um, in... <laughs> Him not look like him fitting in a circle that kind of on like some hush puppy shoes and <laughs> every man, every convict or every potential convict or who look like a criminal, yes or who is going to face the law, have a regular look to them like pants sagging lower than normal, like them belt now work, hair plot up, some people have on them bandana upon them head, you know, everybody have on push slippers, he is there in attire that looks like he's going to the office a button-down dress shirt and him a jump off at the back of the truck a button-down dress shirt some hush puppy looking shoes and some straight pants man good luck to him but hear what hear what dropped today though according to nationwide radio jm silvera facing evidence tampering charges now now remember they told us from before that he could be charged with other things well a bombshell dropped today. Silvera is now facing evidence tampering charges as well. A lawmaker's wife cooperating with murder probe. Here is what the article said. Murder accused and former West St. Mary Member of Parliament Jolian Silvera is to make his first appearance in the Home Circuit Court at 2 on Thursday afternoon even as his legal woes appear to be deepening, mm -hmm. well, he, he went to court. And I just told you his family was not allowed in the courtroom. The judge said they will be allowed at a later date, just not today. Because she have to use discretion with each case, whatever that means. Nationwide News says that they understand that the wife of the senior opposition legislator had spoken to the police and is cooperating with the investigators. The wife of a senior opposition legislator has spoken with the police and is cooperating with investigators. I don't know which wife of which senior opposition legislator they might talk about, but keep that on the back burner for a second. Nish People, look. This look like, say, a multiple people involved, okay? This look like somebody knows something about something and their name is now mixed up in a this something, yes, sir. Yeah, 
So I'm looking to see more names uncovered then. Yeah man, it goes deep. Watch this. And then Nationwide understands that Silvera is also under investigation for corruption and for tampering in connection with what the police suspect to be an attempted elaborate cover-up of his wife's brutal murder. It's understood that the police are probing the circumstances in which it appears that the barrel of Silvera's licensed firearm was altered in the aftermath of Melissa's murder. For all of us who are gun specialists and carry gun and watch the show them about gun and the crime stories and the ballistics, how it comes back to a gun, you know, and for the novice who don't know, every gun has what is called the gun's fingerprint. You see like how each one of we have a fingerprint and it don't match nobody else's fingerprint and you can use that fingerprint to access your phone. Some countries you can now use that fingerprint to access immigration places like going through immigration with ease, that for that for so on and so forth. If, you, if they catch your fingerprint at a crime scene, then that, that, that is considered um, something that is very telling. You're gonna have to prove how your fingerprint got there now you are in danger of being locked up right the fingerprint is that significant so inside the barrel of every gun is what's called that gun's own fingerprint it appears according to news out of jamaica it appears that his gun was modified in order to change up the fingerprint of the gun right now remember i said earlier when they first went and got his gun from him i said to my audience mr cho they already know that that gun is not going to come back to that murder because that man would not be so stupid to use his licensed firearm to kill his wife and then still be holding on to the gun so when time police come he's like Oh, here is the gun and take it go do ballistic testing there's no way but guess what that's exactly what happened he held on to the gun and when they came and they said give us your gun we're gonna take the gun confiscate it take it for testing just to rule you out as a person it came back that the gun he has that is registered to him through the FLA that gun is actually a match to the bullet fragments that were found inside his wife's body. Lo and behold, now it's also been found that they did some work upon the gun to try and make the gun not match the ballistics. You understand? So I'm thinking he must have been so confident. He must have been so confident in whatever they did to distort the fingerprint of the gun then if you will that him hold on upon the gun. So when time them come, he was like, here, take it. Because in his mind, there's no way they're going to prove that it matches. Well, it come back to be a match, my friend. All right. So um, it's understood that the police are probing circumstances in which it appears that the barrel of Silvera's licensed firearm was altered in the aftermath of Melissa's murder. Now, I'm still here wondering who for wife, which prominent politician's wife, is it that has been questioned by police and is also cooperating with this investigation? Hmm. Silvera, who's chairman of the PNP's Founders Group. He is the chairman of the PNP's Founders Group. He's under investigation in connection with the suspected tampering of the weapon. The policeman, a breakthrough in the case. The police made a breakthrough in the case when unique markings on a bullet that was found inside Melissa's body corresponded to records stored at the Firearm Licensing Authority, FLA, which outlined particulars of the weapon that was assigned to Silvera. See, I don't think he knew that much. You're, you're, you're smart, but you're never smart enough. Every gun that is legally put on the market its ballistic is already stored this is why bad man not carry license gun right because if you bust it over here so they, all they have to do is go to the database 
and see that is the gun that was given to so and so on this day a hit a gun shoot people that's why gunman and badman don't carry license gun them carry loose gun right because the ballistics are stored so <laughs> his ballistics that are stored at the FLA came back to whoop his ass basically Silvera could face additional charges according to this DPP Paula Llewellyn's office is expected to issue a voluntary bill of indictment today transferring Silvera's murder case from the first mentioned court of halfway tree to the home circuit court in downtown Kingston now if you think say that's how it stop I know that's how it stop my friend it gets deeper hold on to your seat watch this nationwide news says that they understand that the police are also moving to interview at least two other prominent members of part um, members of the people's national party the police are moving to interview at least two more prominent members of the people's national party who are also former members of parliament who visited the bloody crime scene after mrs silvera was killed what a backside so two ex-members of parliament who are prominent members of the people's national party are said to have visited the bloody crime scene after melissa was killed now you have to ask yourself how deep in did they go did he panic and call his friends and say john and joe boy me do something bad you know come up at the house up at stony hill quick me need no help or was it a case of they went there and them try help the man for cover it up well brother we have to go um clean up the place and the tile we have to go redo the tile and you know somebody said so flow fingerprints all they had to do right like fingerprints are hard to get off furnitures that's probably why they replaced the furnitures i said no fingerprints are not them could have just sprayed down the furnitures and wiped down the furnitures and fingerprints would have disappeared it's not fingerprints they were trying to hide them probably shoot inside of that house and blood splatter when blood splatter is lodged in creases crevices or when gunshot fly through furniture you can't you might as well just replace the furniture because when investigators come and they start looking around the place and they see these things then you know if you're trying to cover up the scene that's gonna be very telling for you that something took place here but this are the part where get me nationwide understands that the police are also moving to interview at least two other prominent members of the people's national party when we see this and it says that they are former members of parliament as well who visited the bloody crime scene after mrs silvera was killed i said to myself yeah the election in jamaica just got frigged in other words just go on ahead and give the prime minister seat to Andrew Holness for the next however long. I'm going to tell you why. People's National Party had a momentum going in this election coming up. Especially since they started having celebrity backing. You know, like Bojo Bantan is for the people and these kind of things. But listen, listen. You know what the people are going to say now? The people are going to say, no, we never see no kind of evil like this before. Right? so here what we are going to do we are going to stick to the evil that we know already car andrew bad but him not so bad and that's exactly what is about to take place here mark my words now if you ask me how do you think the next election in jamaica is going to come out because i mean people have been bold all along all that andrew holness have been doing everybody been saying like yeah man just call the election man just call call it and see call it and see with corruption running this deep and now i'm trying to figure out who is the two other prominent members of the people's national party who were also parliament members of parliament who have said to have visited the bloody crime scene me want to know who them is too you know some of this information is just not so forthcoming and 
I understand. It's a case being built and put together. I don't expect them to come out and give us all the details of the case through the media. But one cannot help but to wonder. Right? So on December 16th, Golding amended the Facebook post to remove the name Jolien Silvera and instead offered condolences to the Silvera family. <laughs> Why did he do that? By then, the police had upgraded the case involving Mistress Silvera's death to a murder probe after a post-mortem revealed the autopsy comeback and revealed that she did not die of natural causes, but, you know, gunshot, she, they found gunshot um, inside of her, right? Uh, casing inside of her, but not casing, but you know what I'm talking about. But her life was cut short by three gunshots, is what this article says. So the police says that Melissa Silvera was shot dead while she was asleep in her bed, in her matrimonial home. This is the new finding. She was shot dead while she was asleep. It was a no big fight and struggle and arguing and loud calling and Lord, somebody come help me, my God kill me. It was none of that. It is saying right here, the police says that Melissa Silvera was shot dead while she was sleeping. God no you know, man. I keep on saying it. I'll say it again. The most dangerous people in the world to you are the people that are closest to you. If you think about this, I apply this to my life, right? My house have cameras and it have alarm system. And if you open any of my doors or windows, it goes bing, bing. Alarm on for front door, something, something. It says something through the alarm system. It alerts everybody, right? The only person who know the code to that alarm and could trip it is for instance wifey right so if she want murder me in my sleep me no stand a chance you understand she'll get up and trip that alarm after me drop asleep and latina side man or latina gunman i'm just saying the people who can hurt you the worst are the people who are closest to you findings show that melissa was sound asleep if this woman thought she was going to be murdered by this man or if she had something to worry about, she wouldn't go sleep. Nobody would. Right? Or at least go sleep in a different room in the house and lock the door. So I would have to kick off the door to come in there because I fear for my life. I don't really trust Jolian anymore. But she in her matrimonial bed. That means she in her bedroom, the master bedroom as we call it, that you share with your husband. Don't have a care in the world. Night, honey, I'm going to lay down, retire for the evening, and man, fully up a gunshot in your sleep. Now, with the election coming up, and I'm saying this, this is not going to look good for the People's National Party, I have a bunch of other things that are pressing on my mind concerning this case. Hmm. You know, JLP is definitely going to play politics with this. And I can't blame them. Politics is a dirty game. And if I was in it, I would definitely be playing politics with this too. Because, of course, they came out when Paul Wells' situation happened with Leota Bradshaw and Paul Wells' 10-month-old daughter, Saraya, and her mom, right? They were like, oh, we're calling for the resignation of Philip Paul Well. And it led people to believe that Paul Well was involved. Even though all evidence shows he was not involved in any way, shape, or form, right? Right, but they sure did politicize it. So you think the JLP know that them have this adult historia? You think they're not going to use this to their advantage? Yo, them get frig. You hear me? Now, to me, this one could look at this like the People's National Party just dashed for that election here. Like, this is a big screw-up. This is the guy... I don't know if you play sports, but it'd be that one guy on the team who kicked the goal that could have saved the team and the goal miss and will lose the match. And it was a championship match. This is him, right there, so. 2015, he got married. 2016, him lose him seat. 2017, his two-year-old is found drowned in the pool at home where he was. 2023, his wife is murdered. 
and he is now charged in 2024 shortly after putting her to rest with her murder and now with evidence tampering modification of his personal firearm licensed firearm and a bag of other something now people must know that when he that he was still on the campaign trail representing the people's national party up until december of 2023 up until the moment that the jcf said hey whoa we're treating this as a murder that's only then and when the people's national party said okay um jolian you have to go can now this i get too close to it and we don't want it mess up what we have a go on over here so can you know people stay already yo the whole of them over there still just like him right guilty by association that's what the whole um election why i have so much to say but i'm gonna leave it right here for now leave your comments in the comment section below tell me what you think about this one i'm definitely staying close to this one what a piece of sitting this are coming like some soap opera or some netflix series where we're just watching the episodes unfold who are the other two mem ex-members of parliament that are prominent people's national party members who have said to have visited the bloody scene after she was murdered the man did I get some help and you know a wife said to me you know um you know that she's also uh what's his name goddaughter uh forget his name right now but pj patterson's goddaughter and you know i said well that could very well be the reason she said that could very well be the reason why he's not getting the kind of help that we think he would get from the old boys club because his actual our, our godfather is pj right but on the other hand knowing how politics go and the old boys club go i'm over here saying that could probably be the reason why he got away with it so long and look like he was actually getting some help to try to cover it up the thing does blow out big let me close this video by saying this and clarifying again a doctor is required to pronounce somebody dead the doctor does not have to see any wounds on the person to say they are dead they just pronounce the person dead based on vital signs no longer there etc right but a doctor cannot say what is the cause of death until after an autopsy is done i repeat i've seen cases where someone got shot and then when the autopsy was done it said the person did not die from the gunshot they died from a heart attack that was induced through fear because the person who got shot started hyperventilating and sent themselves into a heart attack and died from cardiac arrest, not from the gunshot they received. So to assume that somebody dead from the gunshot just because them get shot, that's a no-go, right? So clarify that please and understand that that is not what I'm saying. This is the reason I'm asking who is the doctor that said she died of natural causes because although they could have pronounced her dead it wasn't their place to say she died of a b or c until after an autopsy was done and that information came out before the autopsy report came with that said i'll catch y'all on the next video it gets sticky 2024 year of reveal and i better make sure so i tighten up on a business here because if you're out here doing wrong you might get exposed too i'm out peace